is Shauna Plank, and I'm the chairwoman of the Kaufman Cyrus Syndrome Foundation. In this video, you will hear from our medical advisors, both of whom are committed to researching and providing clinical care to children and adults with CSS. Dr. Heis Santen is a clinical geneticist at the Leiden University Medical Center in Leiden, Netherlands, where he has the National CSS Expertise Center. He joined the CSS Foundation formally this year and has worked with some of our families over the past decade. Dr. Samantha Vergano is the Division Director of Medical Genetics and Metabolism at Children's Hospital of the King's Daughter in Norfolk, Norfolk Virginia, and an Associate Professor of Pediatrics at Eastern Virginia Medical Center. Dr. Vergano also runs the CSS clinic out of CHKD. Many of our US-based families have visited her in clinic, possibly you watching this video, and others have seen her virtually. Not only are they both terrific clinicians and researchers, but also very kind and caring human beings. What does the community need to know about your research, the registry, anything else that you have going on? Any individual who's been diagnosed molecularly with Coffin Cyrus is eligible to be enrolled in the registry. And it consists of an online survey that caretakers fill out and it just asks you questions about your child's health, their growth, their development, any medical challenges, things like that. And it really serves as a database for other research that comes out of Coffin Cyrus and enables us to give families guidance on what to predict for their children. It also gives other clinicians interesting information about what they may need to look at if they have patients with Coffin Cyrus. I think we have about 415 individuals in the registry now. That's a, a great number that we're, we're thrilled with. So what do you think the future of CSS research looks like? Better understanding the, the, the trajectory of CSS, or the time core. But obviously the other thing may be that I think we're starting to understand the pathway more and more, and perhaps there are ways to intervene in the pathway, yeah, to, to find treatment. And many of our community members are looking to support this research. What's the best way that we can support you directly? Joining the registry is the first step, I would say, because part of the surveys are really to address medical issues and struggles that families endure so we can know what to focus our research on. I would like to chime in also that the CSS Foundation, over 80% of the incoming donations that we received in 2021 have gone towards research and certainly that's something that we will continue to you know, funnel and support moving forward. What's a typical process or end timeline from a research trial or gathering information to when it might lead to a treatment for the child. Maybe it's good to mention the example of the clonazepam trial. In late 2017, there was the mouse paper where clonazepam was described, and I saw it and I immediately thought, okay, this is something we should test. So I talked to people about how we're going to measure something and see if there's an effect. And we had that data in a year or so, which was really fast. But then we had to go to the next step, and which was a clinical trial, and even though this was a, a medicine that is already approved, so it's you know it's much easier than, than uh, doing something like gene therapy. I expect that we'll have the results of the trial somewhere end of this year. So then you would say it's it's about five years, and this is inflated a bit because of the pandemic, but a couple of years is really the bare minimum if you set up a trial. But it takes a lot of effort to get all the data from you know different parts of the world because that's what you have to do because it's so rare. Something else I've heard is, what's the benefit to me? So if I know that my son might not get the, the benefits of the work that you're doing now, what's the purpose? What's the reason for me participating in a registry? In a lot of circumstances, you're not going to reap some immediate direct benefit from these types of things. But I hear a lot of families say, you know, if this will help another child, I'm happy to do it kind of thing. And so I think that that's really, it's really a community benefit. What's the most rewarding thing for you about researching CSS? For me, it's my work and I'm actually, I'm happy to be able to do it. But, you know, parents are so grateful that research is being done on the syndrome of their child. So that, that also, of course, is very Rewarding. The joy for me is to see kids in clinic and be like, wow, well, look how amazing your kid is doing. Like, look at all the things that they're achieving that you last year said to me, oh, I, I don't know if they'll ever talk or they'll ever walk. And, and they're just blowing those expectations out of the water. And so it's, it, I sit in a neat position because I get to see that. I just love our Coffin Cyrus kids. I think they're bright. I think they're amazing. It's, it's such a great joy for me. Well, thank you. It's wonderful to hear that from both of you. And 
I can't thank you enough for not only the work that you're doing, but taking the time today to show us as well, you know, and talk more in detail about all the research that we have to look forward to. And for everybody watching this video, thank you for taking the time to watch the video. And if you haven't already, please follow us on social media. You can visit our website, which is coffincyrus.org um, to learn more, see a list of all research uh, publications related to CSS and continue to support the efforts of these two amazing physicians. So thank you both very much.